Psalm 112, 1 through 9. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in their commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph over their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi, welcome to worship today. Um, as you notice, I'm in a different place. We're in our kitchen today. Um, it is really cold outside, so I tried to find the best lighting for you all. And um, I'm looking forward to worshiping with, the, with you wherever you are. Hopefully it's a nice warm spot. As we start today, we're going to start in 1 Kings to learn about God's call to service. And we're going to be in 1 Kings 18 starting in verse 7. So will you please join me for the word of God? As Obadiah was walking along, he suddenly saw Elijah coming toward him. Obadiah recognized him at once and bowed low to the ground before him. Is it really you, my lord Elijah? he asked. Yes, it is, Elijah replied. Now go and tell your master, Elijah is here. Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death at the hands of Ahab? For I swear by the Lord your God that the king has searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time he was told, Elijah isn't here. King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear to the truth of his claim. And now you say, go and tell your master Elijah is here. But as soon as I leave you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to who knows where. When Ahab comes and cannot find you, he will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. Has no one told you, my Lord, about the time when Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? I had one hundred of them in two caves and supplied them with food and water. And now you say, go and tell your master. Elijah is here. Sir, if I do that, Ahab will certainly kill me. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord Almighty, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab this very day. So Obadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come, and Ahab went out to meet Elijah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This story in Kings is part of a larger conflict between an evil king, Ahab, and the great prophet Elijah. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel had not only sanctioned worshiping the god Baal, but demanded it and slaughtered those who stayed faithful to Yahweh, God of Israel. Elijah condemned them to a famine and then went into hiding for three years. For some reason, Ahab and Jezebel were convinced that if they killed Elijah, they would end the curse sent by God. So Ahab had sent on a top So Ahab had sent a top official named Obadiah to find Elijah, who has been missing for three years. And that is where we come into the story today. Obadiah finds Elijah, and Elijah says, Well, Go tell Ahab I'm here. And Obadiah is worried he is going to be double-crossed. He's worried that Elijah will run off while he's gained Ahab, and he will suffer the consequences. So that's the top layer of the story. 
but there's a layer under that in this text that we're going to actually be focusing on today. But you kind of have to know that top part to understand the story underneath. The story that talks about how we are called to be servants. So underneath this top story, we discover that Obadiah isn't just any servant of Ahab's. He is a treasonous one. Even though Elijah keeps calling Ahab Obadiah's master, Obadiah keeps telling Elijah that in fact Elijah is Obadiah's master. And in this passage, master or servant is used in every single verse. Because this passage is not, in this passage, master or servant is used in every single verse. Because this passage is not just about telling Ahab that Elijah is alive. It's about Obadiah's call to service. It's about who Obadiah is a servant to. Is he a servant to Ahab, Israel's earthly king? Or is he a servant of God? Israel's heavenly king. Elijah keeps insisting that Obadiah is Ahab's servant. In fact, he says it once, and Obadiah reflects it back two times. Three times it's credited to Elijah for calling Obadiah Ahab's servant. That is, after all, what he looks like. He lives in the palace, he manages the palace, he is trusted enough. He's trusted enough for Ahab to send him out on a search party. But Obadiah says these looks are deceiving. He has used this place of power and privilege to save a hundred enemies of the state. He split these prophets up for protection into two caves. And he's fed them and supplied them with water through a drought and a famine. Along with the evidence of his actions, he explicitly calls Elijah his master. In fact, he only uses the term master once for King Ahab. But in reference to Elijah, he uses master and servant about their relationship four times. Obadiah is saying, you think I serve Ahab. But I serve you, Elijah. You think I serve Baal, but I serve the living God of Israel. Obadiah never doubts that he is a servant. He knows that he takes orders. For him, service is not the question. The question is who he will choose to serve. For Obadiah, service is allegiance. He can choose to serve Ahab. And serving Ahab is really self-serving. All he has to do is keep his mouth shut and follow orders. He'll be provided with food and shelter and safety. Or he can choose to serve Elijah. Serving Elijah and God puts all Obadiah has at risk. It puts his job at risk. It puts his life at risk. It's not just that he will lose his food and shelter. He risks execution. And yet, he still chooses God. His choice is between silence, obedience, and death. And in the midst of those options, he chooses death. He would rather serve God and save lives than protect his own life. He would rather do what is right than live in comfort. Now, few of us have a choice that extreme. There have been those who did have a choice throughout history that extreme. In fact, one of the Christians that comes to mind as soon as I mention something like that is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer could have moved to America before Nazis shut down the borders, but he chose to stay in Germany and fight against Nazis because God was his master. For Bonhoeffer, it was a choice of life or death, silence and comfort, or death as an enemy of the state. But many of us have to make smaller choices about our allegiances every day. 
Francis Asbury chose to hide in attics rather than to give up on Methodism in the United States. And even John Wesley chose to continue to evangelize and plant small groups and risk being thrown out of the Church of England. Our choices may look more like theirs. They might not be as mammoth as Dietrich Bonhoeffer's. But each day we make a choice of who we will serve. Will we? Our choices may look more like theirs. They may be choices to break the silence in the midst of corruption. It may be to speak out against others being treated unjustly or being bullied. It may be to keep doing the good before us when others make it hard. But like Obadiah, we have to answer the question, who do we serve? Where does our allegiance lie? Do we serve only those that we can get something out of? Or do we choose to look out for others at our own risk like Obadiah did? Service to God is risky. Obadiah risked his life serving Elijah. More importantly, serving God. It can be risky for us to, too. It can cost us friendships. It can cost us jobs. It can cost us life even. But serving God is always worth the risk. It was worth it to Obadiah. And it's worth it to us. Because there are some things this world doesn't bother to measure. Bonhoeffer's legacy, Asbury's legacy, John Wesley's legacy transformed the world. Obadiah transformed the world. Those who choose to be mastered by opposition are now lost to history. But their service to God has had implications for generations beyond them. Just as Obadiah's service did. May we serve as they did. May we know our master as God and unashamedly serve him. Let us pray together. God, we thank you so much for your presence with us wherever we may find ourselves. And the way that you have connected us through the Holy Spirit, even when we are apart. God, each day we face questions of who we will serve. We take risks that may make us ostracized. And yet, God, you call us to continue to serve you to be able to take risk for you, to stand up for the lost, the least, and the last, in a world that asks us to forget them. God, wherever we are and whatever we are facing, whatever choices of integrity we are faced with, help us this day and every day hear your call to service and choose to serve you as our master. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all